Hey, we're in Gulfport, Mississippi at Marcio's house. Marcio, introduce yourself. First, last name, because you can say your last name a whole lot better than I can. <laughs> There's a Brazilian ways to say your There's last name. There's a Brazilian <laughs> ways to say it. Actually, it's an Italian. <laughs> it's an Italian last name, but it's Marcio Borgazan. Hey, we're here at the Hog Addiction headquarters. And I, I hey, the privilege to have Russ Jones and Brian Ducharn smokehouse by you here. Hey, we're just having a great time. We are, and Marcio, he is like a world champion. He has won Memphis and May on the Hog. Ho Hog. Ho Hog. Ho -hog and uh, won countless awards. So what we're going to do today is have Marcio show how he does steak for like an SCA steak cook-off. And I just recently been to one of them along with this guy, yeah. and you were there also. Yes. And a lot of fun. I was instantly addicted to that. We so, were on Chad's team with Maggie's Farm. That's right. Yeah. Chad Whittington with mm -hmm. uh, Maggie's Farm. But today we're going to watch a professional do this, and we're all going to learn something. <laughs> we'll be back. So here we go, guys. What we have here is basically... A, a ribeye prime rib that I've sliced and so basically I'm gonna take you back to its original cut no science here I just cut them to an inch and a quarter and so here we go this was the beginning you know this was my first cut second cut third and fourth I couldn't quite get a, a fifth steak there we're gonna the dog will eat that it's a good day to be a dog so <laughs> Yes, so what I like to show you guys, this, this is my preference on steaks, what I like. So the spinalis is this area, and this is basically what your judges are gonna be eating from. And so you want it to serve, you want it to have a really good area. Now, as, as you see, as I cut it through this meat, you're gonna see where I'm start getting a little more fat in here. Now, no judges out there are gonna eat that, but you know, that's a, some people call it for flavor, they like on their steak, that's their preference. I'm, I wanna be somewhere in between. If I had to pick my favorite steak here, I probably would pick this guy, you know, when I'm turning that in. Or, you know, this guy or this one right here. So, that's a beautiful steak. So basically, you're gonna bring it to the judges, you're gonna have them, you're gonna serve them that area. So I will go over that a little bit more with you guys and through the details of that. So I've got my favorite steak laying here and really what I want to show you guys what I would do to a steak, a basic trimming. This steak, it, it doesn't have a whole lot here that, that requires a lot of trimming, but I want to give you guys a little quick tip. We're going to take it. We're going to take this line right here. We're going to get it out. Basically, I just follow that line. We're going, we're going to get that out. My knife's not quite sharp. And we're going to start molding that. And basically anything that's not desirable to eat in here, I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of it. And there, that little membrane, you can follow it. Follow around. You know, you can come in here and get rid of this little fat. Right there. So that right there is your your steak, and of course we're gonna we're gonna tie them down. We're gonna keep them in shape as we cook it, but basically that's that's my trimming right there. Looks good. So guys, this is what I want to show you guys, which you may run into this on in SCA. I have to where you know you draw on a number, and and your steak may look like this. And here's here's what I what my solution for that is. And, uh, and of course, I've had great mentors that, that passed this down to me. And, and as simple as, as that, what is that going to do? So basically what this guy is going to do, we're going to insert this together. We're going to tie this steak, but a lot of times it'll, it'll end up trying to poke up like that. And so you don't want that. And so what this guys are going to do, we're going to insert them through, and we're going to protect those muscles from jumping up. When you squeeze it with your line, you don't want them to move because basically what would happen is, see if I can get you guys a good view. So you're trying to, 
You see how that kind of oscillates back and forth? Well, you want that to stay together as, as long as you can on the process of cooking. And, and, and the way to do it is those guys. Here we go. Let's put some love on this, guys. I've got a mass of twine here. Look like I'm going to tangle myself up with this, guys, but I'm not. So putting love on something starts with Marcio tying it up. <laughs> so what is, I, I realize the tying up helps the spinalis from separating just like the uh, skewers you showed earlier, but what else does it do? It helps give you the shape you're looking for? Absolutely, yes. Okay. So you, this is the moment that you're going to decide on the trimming really where you decide your shape. Yeah. You know, you can, I could perfectly take this steak and trying to get into a round petty, but you see right here when I make that cut, I'm going to have a little indention there. Now I can make that go away by just shape it back the way I intended to do it and it'll be like that. Okay. So probably can use a little more trimming and a lot of times when I, when I tie, certain things are going to come up and I still do a, right. another, another trimming. So this is, this is basically what I do as far as my tying. Okay, go a few loops right here. Because if you're trying to do just a single knot, right. you're going to try to hold it, push against your stake, and, and trying to get they, that they second knot. They call that the butcher's knot, I think, or what do they call that? I, I don't know the particular name, but see, that's... I use that's, that a lot. It works. It holds it itself. Yeah, see, I don't have to try to fight to get a second knot. and right. So once I get that tight, I go back in here, trying to get my shape. And of course, I want to get that line down, because I'm going to try two of them, Okay. I'd like to, to tie it twice. Okay. So, and then look, when I'm, when I'm gonna wait until I tie my second one, here I come with my second line. This one is a little short, still gonna be fine. I'll go with at least four or five times. And here it comes. You can apply a little pressure in it you know right and then so as as you apply that pressure you're going to realize see all of a sudden my steak is a little higher here and that has to do with the cut so i do actually have a little more meat here i'm going to take my knife and this it's a perfect knife for that i'm going to come in here and i'm going to slightly take it just what i need Now so you guys, we want a uniform height across the top of that stage. Absolutely. Okay. That's that's my desirable. My my goal is that when it sits on that box, and this is see this is a perfect night for that. It just this is a tremendous job. And now we're getting there, and so my next thing will be the edges. You see, those edges. I don't want them doing that. All right. I can move my lines up a little bit, but they still there. So what I'm going to do, typically I use a pair of scissors. If you have really good knives, you'll be able to accomplish the same thing. I'll just come around here. And just like that, it changes. You just kind of ride that over. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can put as much work as you want to. You make your presentation just as beautiful. I mean, it, it gets to where you're going to get carried away. I do, and, and I, I wouldn't blame you. So now I've got here, I'm going to do my seasoning now, and then after I do my seasoning on it, then I'm going to do my poke through. Okay. And then once I poke through, I don't touch anymore, and then we'll go for, to the grill for that. Uniform, perfect steak, as well as a lot of other things as far as the perfect bite and the flavor, the perfect doneness, right? Oh, absolutely. So Doesn't. that's a big part of it. You know, and we'll talk about the dozen, doneness in a minute. You know, yeah. I can cook this four steaks with the same seasoning but different time and different doneness, and right. I scored different on every one of them. Wow. So, you know, yeah. so you change your time, you, it just, your yeah. temp is, so your seasoning, and then, you know, of course, now. So this is a practice state. This is not the state we're gonna use. We're actually using a hassle inch and a quarter uh, Texas Wagyu. That's gonna be the, the final state, but my question is how many practice runs would you typically typically do at a S, uh, SCA event? 
take advantage of, you know, it's, as a steak is pretty expensive, you know. Yeah. I, I'd say at least before, I would do one before you go cook. Right. The day before if you have the chance to do it. Right. But I'll definitely do the day before. Right. And then a few in there, yeah. here and there. And but they don't only give you a practice steak, do they? Or They, they do. They do? They okay. do. Typically, you, you hold that practice steak and you know how to, right. you know, how your steak really turn out. Gotcha. So, okay. the outcome of your steak. So... There's a little guy right here that I don't want him there. See ya. Now I would, if I'm personally competing, yeah, I'll trim the crap out of this steak still. Really? I would. I mean, a lot of this. Yeah. A lot of that. I would go around, you know. Look, I, I can sit here and waste y'all's hour, just if I continue to do all of it, you know. All right, here we go. Let's get the seasoning going. Today we're going to be doing two different steaks, two different flavor profiles, they kind of close. Right. I tried these two rubs, they're both excellent. Both of these guys, they're good friends of mine. Uh, old Smokehouse Bayou, Brian. Oh, Brian there. Oh, Brian. <laughs> He's something okay, so there. The level is dirty. It's out. And this blend right here is Southern Lynx blend that they partnered up together. Two great guys. This, this is good stuff. We're going we're gonna to go take two of these. And we're gonna do two of these guys. So here we go. Look, look at the consistency of that. So basically, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go really heavy. I ain't scared, as y'all can see. The wind's kind of picking it up. And I'm gonna pat it down. That's a beautiful rub right there, man. Trying to keep the wind out of it. All right, let's see. My thing is about seasoning on a steak. This is not a, if I would serve the steak to my wife, she loves a steak. Right. I would not heavily season this way because she's going to actually enjoy the whole steak. This is way over seasoning. So that's really what you want. Judges are going to take one bite. one bite. So you really want them to get the best out of it. All of that flavor, you know. Uh, steak by you, steak dust right here, steak this, this guy right here's got garlic, it's got paprika, you know, others, you know, cayenne pepper. It's got a little kick in it. It's by you, you know, kind of Cajun. So you want that. You want just a little bit of that. So you want, you want the judge to be able to experience all those flavors at one bite. So we're going to let that rest for a minute. And we're going to move over to Dirty Sout competition blend here. Wow, you really do pack it on there. Yes. Yes. And then we're going to, I'll let them rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take, once the seasoning is in it, I'm going to take it and I'm going to do my other side. Okay. And so I want to, a couple minutes will be fine before you flip, but that's just how I do it. Just wanting to sweat out a little yes. on that side. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to let this guy's rest. Hey, I think it's time for us to get a fire going. What do y'all think? Yeah. So that's the B&B uh, competition charcoal, right? Yes. And I want to do is I want to I break them a little bit to start. Ah, okay. Cuz you know a lot of times they just have a lot of air on it. So I'm going to break those to start my chimney and then I'm going to add more to my to my Your bottom fire basket. Yes, yeah, so, to my fire okay. basket on the bottom. I'm going to add so it's going to be uh one Take thing I like this uh, over here, camera guy. This man, that, that feels like it's almost a half inch. What, what it, is it? Three eighths. I, I think it's three eighths. Three eighths. It's pretty thick. It is heavy. Heavy, heavy. I, I it's mean, hard to tell on video. You know, I'm looking at it. How heavy is that? That is super heavy. Gonna get those. For any of you that haven't seen this, this is the tribal fire grill, and uh, it'll fit. 22 and a half inch uh, drum smokers. I'm not sure if it'll fit a Weber kettle. I looked at the fire basket. It looks like it might, but I'm not positive. I know it would, the Weber Smoky Mountain. But uh, this thing is bad to the bone. All right, let's see what the inside of this bad boy looks like. Okay, so there's your fire basket. 
And uh, I read this on the website, I guess it's great. This would fit any kind of 22, 22 and a half inch. Basically, yeah. And yeah. those those ears right there, you know, the hanging sides, you can yeah. adjust them up and down to where they, they'll, you know, they're not gonna be holding this weight. Right. Basically, all they're gonna be holding that in the charcoal. So you can actually flatten them out right. to where you can get up to 24, 25 inches. Oh, we're, gonna, right. we're gonna take this bad boy here. And basically what I'm gonna do Add on our charcoal. First thing I'm going to do before I add my basket, we're going to take some good old char logs and I'm going to create a bed down here. So here we go. Now we're going to place our, our basket. And this guy is hot. We're gonna let him. You heat it up, and then you clean your surface. Absolutely. Let that get going a little more. Man, they've got a thing going where if you win an SCA event on a tribal fire grill, tribal fire is gonna send you a grand. Really? All you have to do is. Tell me you want to cook with the tribal, we'll hook you up, you know. Yeah. Uh, of course, we can't give everybody a grill. Right. But if you'd like to purchase a grill and you'd like to go SCA, yeah. we'll hook you up, we'll put a bounty on you. And if you get top 10, we'll get you 250. You get $250. If you get first place, you get $1,000. Wow. I think SCA, uh, here's what's, you know, the, the places I've been with this grill and that we're cooking, it's, it's very attractive to people, one, it's, it's you know, you can, you can, uh, all three of us could be here cooking something. You know, right. hey, if you think your steak's better than mine, well, come on in. Your steak's better than mine. We can actually have a little buddy competition right. here, a little cook off. The heat's the same. And here we are, you know, you can bring that to your backyard and just play. Yeah. But I tell you, SCA's is, uh, what I like about SCA's is it's a one day event. Right. And as yeah. you guys know, it changes everything about barbecue competitions to me, you know, competition. You don't have to roll in with your big old rig and stay there for two days, three days, you know, knock off on a Wednesday trying to get there Thursday and right. through the weekend. You can just come out there with a pop-up tent and ice chest and Well, it's not just grilling. easier on the participants. It's easier on the either the municipality or the place that's hosting it as yeah. well. Because it doesn't have to be a three-day or right. two-day thing. So. I thoroughly enjoyed that one at the shed. That's my first experience with any SCA. That was perfect. I'll be back next year. And oh, typically yeah. they are. I'm not invited, I'll just go hang around. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll make it there. But yeah, that's that's one of the things, you know, and make it, it's affordable. Everybody can go, you know, it's not a ton of money, you know, you don't have to buy a ton of meat. You know, typically if we go to a barbecue competition, it, it costs us two grand plus. Right. SCA, you can get out of there below five hundred dollars oh, yeah. every time, unless you really go crazy. But right. way below five hundred dollars. So you're doing the back side. The back side now, and and, and uh, we're going to treat those edges as well. We're going to turn our steak on the side, and anytime you're doing this, be be very gentle with your steak. You don't want to really be aggressive moving, you know, because it can really yeah, start can break apart on you. Huh? Coming, and losing, and we're gonna we're gonna penetrate them with those uh, skewers. We're gonna keep them in a good shape so we can, and look, again, you know, I'm not being shy on that seasoning. I want, I wanted to be there. And one important thing that I like to point out to you guys, every time I use this new seasoning, I'm trying something out, it's important to taste your rub. I talked to some of my buddies and I said, did you taste that? He said, oh, my ribs are horrible. I said, did you taste those ribs? Right. Did you taste the rub before you put on it? You know, that gives you an idea of flavor, sure. you know, taste it. See if you like it. If you don't, don't put on it. And that's, that's, you know, this two right here, I've been eating off this jar lately. And this one right here, every time I go in there, trying to figure it out, I toss it on my mount, you know. Yeah. And so I, that's how you, you define if you really like or not, you're, you're up. Here what we're going to do, we're going to get ready to stick this, guys. And, and what I like to, see, this is, this is where I decide where I'm going to stick. You see that? So in order to mobilize that to where it's not going anywhere, so I'm thinking I'm going to go across right here. No particular way. Right. I wanted to just keep that spinalis there, so I'm, I'm thinking this is where I'm going to go. So I'm going to lay my skewers there, 
And I think that's what I want. I think that's going to give me the bass right there. I have no worry about this coming up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go straight to the middle. And here we go. And then you got to remember when you do this, you want to make sure that your stake continues to the, form, the shape that you want. Because a lot of times as you push a skewer through, you can change the, the shape of your stake. So here's my next one. That seems like a world-class tip to me. Yeah, man. Okay. So, then we're going to get this other ones going, and we're going to put some love on those. And then here's a, here we go. I'm gonna, I always want to get that stake and throw it on my hand because some of them, see, that's kind of connected right there. And so this may be a little different from the other one. I'm going to start a little higher up here and go across right there. And look, this is, this is one of the things that can occur, and I'm glad this happened because I can point it out to you guys. As I'm pushing my skewer through, there he goes. Pop, pop. I actually created, created some that I don't want. Huh. You okay. See, it, it, it created yeah. some that I don't want to happen. So here, here's up. what you can do, guys. You can come back, reset it, and get back into the groove. We can actually leave that alone. We're going to go apply a little pressure there because that's what's giving me a little trouble. And here we go, it's flat now. Uh -oh. See? So, yeah. so those, little, those little things make a difference. If you're trying to get a steak flat, to me, they make a difference. All right, so these are seasoned. They've been resting a while. What do we do from here? So, you know, one of the things that I like to do it's with my steaks, I always like to keep in mind the temperature of my steak before I grill it. Right. And so I always check my temperature. It's important to you to know that's going to add some consistency to your cooking. Because if today you season some and you bring them back to the refrigerator right. and tomorrow you decide that you just want to let them rest on the countertop, mm -hmm. you're going to get two different results. Really? So okay. you got a colder steak and you got a, a more of a room temperature steak. Yeah. So that's going to affect your cooking. You've okay. done this, if you would say. So we're going to just take this, guys, and like I said, I, you know, some of this stuff that's a little out there, that's a little too thick, I'm just going to lightly take it out of here. And you can hand take it. Take your hand and use it as a brush and just basically only leave. Look, look at how beautiful that is. That's, pretty. That's a that beautiful is. color right there. And we're going to do that with all four steaks. And uh, some of those little thick crumbs of onions, garlic, we want to get that out. It, it just helps you when, you when you're cooking. Keep your grates clean. Of course, every time you turn, I'm going to show you here. So let's check our, uh, Russ, Brian, either one, check, check, check our kill. griddle temp and see what we at. I'm showing five, 532. That's perfect. You wanted to be in between 500 and 600. Okay. I think that's perfect. So yeah. what we're going to do, we're going to do a little treating with the duck fat. Gotcha. What was yeah. your internal temperature on these? Brother? So this, they're, they're running about, all of them are about, about 60 degrees right six, now. Okay. Yes. So they're, they're been sitting out and, and I'm okay with that. Now, you want to keep an eye on it. You don't want to leave your steak out too long. You right. got a gap in between about three or four hours. Gotcha. You know. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to carefully. Place it in here. And we're going to take our, our weight. And we're going to go on top of it. And then start our timer. And your timer set for? A minute and 15 for each side. You know, anybody out there looking for a great tool, if you grab that for me, Russ, yeah. and just show it to the camera. That's made by Timberworks, and it's absolutely a great tool to keep up with your time, and nothing will run away from you because we've got a minute 15 for one turn basically a minute 15 for the next turn, and then you flip, there's another minute 15, and then to top it off, you got your last one. So. Very handy for competition. Very, very for competition. But this would be handy for 
really any cook. Anything. If I'm yeah. cooking things here and I decide that I'm cooking chicken and I have some butts cooking, I, I've got four different timers that I can set. Right. And, you know, just a little tip, I put a little tag on the side. You know, typically I just, right. I know where I, my order are. You know, I typically, my top one is pork. The second one is, you know, chicken, brisket, and fish. Right. You know, kind of that order. Brush those grits. And we're going to... Uh, All right, so we took our steak out of here. It's a good, great way to keep up how you have your steak taken out of the grill is this stew actually tells you where it came from. And then here we go. We're going to come and we're going to offset it about 45. And we're going to let that baby sit right there. And we're going to reset our time. You doming it again? Yes. So one of the reasons, guys, just to keep in mind on the tribal fire grill, because it's not like a, your typical PK, the dome provides really that, it locks in that heat. It doesn't let it escape, and so it provides that sweat on the top of your steak as well. So here we are. We're ready to flip this bad boy and about to see what the color really going to be. All right. We're going to treat those grates. And we're going to get a little duck fat. Ooh, Ooh look at that. Nice. That's beautiful right there, guys. That is beautiful. That's pretty. No kidding. Look all that juice started coming out of the top. So we're right there. We're going to go 100% on this side. And we're going to set our time. So that weight, you know, although it looks like perfect here, but when the heat hits the steak, uh -huh. all of those muscles start pulling, fat start burning. So right. that steak's going to move on you and it's going to start, a lot of the membrane that's on the steak is going to start one of the clothes that steak in. Yeah. There's still a lot of it left on the steak, so basically what that's gonna do is gonna push it down, right. create that perfect grill mark right. that you that you desire. If you leave it without it, you're not gonna get a really good grill mark on it. We're gonna go ahead and take that out. We're gonna probe this steak. We're gonna take it out, Ooh, set it here. It's pretty. I'm gonna set it right up there and rest it. We're at 131, 32. So we're we're so close. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna let it. We're gonna let them rest right here. Which is still want to get to 130. 135. That's what I've been looking for. Yes. And look, this is one little tip for you. You know, this is the side we just cooked. Look at that. We're gonna turn to this oh side goodness. to where it was resting more on the opposite side of the heat, and it's gonna do right. some really good to it. And hey, let's throw another one in there. Look, as as you see now, that steak is sweating. Right. It's doing it's doing what I'm looking for. It's beautiful, man. So we've got a little butter, and we got a little finisher that we're gonna put on it. And uh, Brian, you wanna go ahead and gra grab that butter for us, and we're gonna drizzle on it sure. as it rests. How many saunies they got? Like you can only run them so long in between shots. Yeah. So that butter basically is gonna melt now. It's gonna it's gonna go away, and that's just gonna add some flavor. Okay. That's my finishing seasoning. I, I love this, and and I like to press it down a little bit so it kind of goes away. I don't want the judges to be looking at all of that, so we're going to treat this other side. Mm. And and as you can tell, we we do have a a favorite side, don't we? Mm. Yeah, that's that other side. It's the other side, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be shy on this side because it's not going to show. So now one thing that you may not want to forget. It's those strings. You want you want to cut them off before you turn them in. It's a little messy. We remove the twine, and here here is my my favorite one is this guy. I've got my marks laid out just like perfect. So you see how that center the center by spinalis. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have them cut it this way. So right. I think we're gonna go ahead and. All right, so when you turn it in, you said you hand them the box and you say, this is what They're I want gonna you to They're going to ask you if you want to cut it this way 
or that way. Time for the true, huh? Oh man, I can't wait. I think uh, smell incredible. No kidding. I think we put enough effort and hard work on this that I expect a good taste steak. What do y'all think? I know it sure looks I good. I certainly expect a good so taste steak. So this is, steak. what do we got here? We got Dirty Sout and Smokehouse Bayou. Okay. So we're gonna, let me go ahead and take this Spinalis right here. I think, I think this is good. Let's just do our thing here, you know? Ooh. Get a little. This is Spinalis, you said? Yep. Mm. Man, melt in your mouth. It's really? incredible that the amount of seasoning I put on it. Mm -hmm. And you would think you'd get hit by a ton of flavor. Delicious. Hey, our cameraman. Let's get our cameraman. Where you at, cameraman? You come snatch this from us. Hey, our people is taking care of What here. about the camera woman? We got to take care of her too. But we got to give her a, a, a bite size for a girl, you know? Here we go. <laughs> There's somebody there. <laughs> I think Russ is moving mm. a little slower. Ooh, that's good. Mm. 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 Very good. Man. Great flavor. That smokehouse by you? Mm -hmm. Smokehouse Yellow by you. That is good. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. Camera woman. Guys, we got to get y'all's up. Opinion on this. I'm going to put a link on my video yeah. for your website. If y'all want this Smokehouse Bayou, what is that? That's a steak dust. That's a steak dust, Oh, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. That's killer stuff. Smokehouse Bayou dust is oh, ahead yeah. of the game. And we're going to go ahead and put it on that and just All right. tear that. Cool. Wagyu and up. we've done Sean everything that he does to prep the steaks, you know, and to get to your test run on these steaks. So we're probably just going to jump right into showing the grilling of it and then another taste test. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's get to it, guys. That's good. All right. Clean that up for us, Brian. Boy, that smells It has rested. We're ready to cut into this bad boy. I'm huh? ready. I am so ready about it. So let's cut it in. So just to recap a little bit, we went with our steak dust, smokehouse bayou. And we rinsed that off. We went really heavy. And then we came back with our hog addiction blend here, salt, pepper, and garlic. Just freshness. And then this is our, we topped that with that goodness gracious right there. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. So spinalis down, we're gonna go down this way. Mm. And hopefully we got something good in here. I caught some of that fat in there, but check that out. You can tell the amount of fat on this steak. Yeah. Oh it's, yeah, it's highly marbled, it is, man. No kidding. That had a really look, wide spinalis on it too. Look at yeah. that. That's gorgeous. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Look at this. It's going to be flavor. I, I'm, ready, I'm ready to taste this. I don't know about y'all, but let me let me just get in here. Now, what internal temp did you cook at? Cook, cook this, to? We pulled that out at 135. Okay. Mm. There you go, Brian. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh, that's good. Mm. Definitely a little higher on the sodium. Mm -hmm. Get you that first bite. Flavors, I can still taste all the flavors at the Oh, it's excellent, man. It's, it's right very here. tender, very juicy. Mm. Wow. See, as we cut here, Let's see what we got here. Look at that. Nice. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, if you get that shot right there, that is beautiful. Check that out. That's perfect. You nailed it, brother. Show that to Shayla. Shayla, check that Shayla. out. She's got a hand going forward. <laughs> she's like that. she's <laughs> wanting you to drop it. <laughs> Just drop it right here, would you? Well, Marcel, man, I surely appreciate you taking time out of your day to show us how to do this the uh, SCA way. Yeah. I've so enjoyed it, man. I've learned too. a lot. Like, you know, there's many guys out there cooking, 
this is my SCA weight. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guys are gonna watch this video and they're gonna say, hey, but I don't do that, that's fine. Right. You know, right. Right. I have my own way to cook a hog, you know, so everybody has his own way. I'd like to share, I think this video would be really good for some guys that are really trying to get on SCA. Right. Mm -hmm. There's this will give you enough yeah. to be a good contestant out there. Oh, yeah. ain't no doubt. So you can, ain't no doubt. You can give Valuable somebody, information here. Yeah, so there's a lot of good information. If you can watch watch it over again and, and look, practice. Yeah. You know, take mm -hmm. your time, practice. practice makes perfect. That's right. Yes. And uh, you, you'll give somebody a hard time out there. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> Brian, I appreciate it too, brother. Yeah, man. I enjoyed it. I know I learned a lot here. Oh, yeah. Brian sure. brings us the, uh, the Bayou Dust. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Good stuff. Tremendous yeah. flavor. We got. Hey, look, we got to beat the flies out of this steak. So, the way of doing it, we're gonna eat it. That's right. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Until next time, Smoky Ribs, Hog Addiction, Hog Addiction Headquarters, Smokehouse by you. Guys, you know we like we take our our things pretty serious right here. And and one of the things that I when it comes to steak, there's no joke about it. I like to uh, hang tight. I would like to season my steak pretty well. And when I mean well, I want the salt, I want the penetration, I want it in it. <laughs> Get that flavor down in there. And if you're doing a steak in your backyard, bug of salt is your gun.